Hello, I'm Impact Weather Meteorologist Chris Sabair, and over the past few years we've worked with Eric Berger, the Psy Guy over at the Houston Chronicle, and he's asked me today to answer a question for his readers. Where are all the hurricanes? We were promised an active season, not as active as 2010, but an active hurricane season out there, particularly across the Caribbean Sea and the Gulf. Well, where are the hurricanes? Let's take a look at that right now. First of all, let's take a look at some climatology. This graphic shows the seasonal distribution of tropical storms. Tropical storms in yellow and hurricanes in red and the darker reddish brown are major hurricanes. And the seasonal distribution would say that at this time in the middle parts of July, we're looking at a very quiet period. We don't have much activity that occurs during the month of July. Typically, the activity typically ramps up very, very significantly right here toward the beginning of August, reaching a peak about the 10th of September, and then falling off and dropping off to very little activity after about the third week of October. So we don't expect a lot of activity before the month of August. And that's true in, in many of the years in the past. We typically don't have a lot of activity before August 1st, even in some of the more active seasons. Looking at the situation out there in the tropical Pacific, we're looking for possibly an El Nino developing last spring. Some of the, this is the graphic that shows the sea surface temperatures in the tropical Pacific. The zero line here is pretty much normal sea surface temperatures. When the temperature in the Pacific is up above the red dash line, that's an El Nino. It tends to inhibit development in the Atlantic Basin. And as we look back in history, back to last July, we can see that the temperatures, this is the temperature curve from last July, this blue line, we are in the La Nina range, and that tends to enhance activity in the Atlantic Basin when the water cools off in the tropical Pacific. Well, the temperatures in the tropical Pacific have been slowly rising up to about normal conditions out there, and some of the early models last spring were forecasting that the temperatures could well continue to rise, maybe up into the El Nino range, and if that were to happen, it could reduce the number of storms that we're going to see this year. Well, what's the forecast now? I think it's a little more certain that we're not going to be moving into the El Nino range. The temperature forecast now is that we've pretty much peaked out there, and during the peak of the season right in here, we're going to see gradually falling temperatures across in the tropical Pacific, leading to another La Nina next winter, and it looks like it's not going to be an inhibiting factor, and that might be a reason to think we might even have maybe one or two additional storms over what was forecast earlier this past springtime. As we look at the past season, the analog years, an analog year is a year that has a similar setup in terms of the steering patterns, the steering flow, the ocean temperatures in the Atlantic and the Pacific to what we're seeing now. And we can make kind of a bold assumption that if the pattern now is very similar to a particular year in the past, that we may have a similar development pattern and tracking pattern over this year than one of those analog years in the past. Now the best analog year that we found is 2008. Very, very similar setup to 2008. And in 2008, we had already had two named storms by this time. Right now we've only had one, Arlene. And we also had had one hurricane by this time in 2008. So we're a little bit behind our best analog year, 2008. And 1996 was another good analog year. We already had two storms by then. A little bit behind, but if we look at how those analog years progressed from mid-July out through the end of the season, they average generally around 14 or 15 named storms for the rest of the season. We've only had one so far, so another 14 or 15 would bring us very close to what we're predicting for the 2011 hurricane season. And if we look at uh, all the data now, uh, the analog years and what's happening out there now, we're still indicating that we're going to have a very active season. We'll probably have another 14 named storms on average from now through the end of the season. So I do think it's still going to be a very active season out there. One of the questions that comes up always in June and July is the amount of dust out there across the tropics. And that dust is that reddish and yellowish area that blows off the Saharan Desert. And at times when the Bermuda High is quite strong, we tend to get a great deal of dust out there. And there's been suggestions that the dust is particularly strong this year and, and more so than we are, even saw last year. Well, right now, that dust is confined to the eastern Atlantic. We have some strong disturbances out here in the tropics and a great deal of moisture through the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico. Now, I did save one of these images from last July, about the same time. Let's take a look at last July and see where that dusty layer was during the middle parts of last July. We can see that it's way past the eastern Atlantic all the way into the eastern Caribbean Sea, almost uh, halfway across the entire Atlantic Basin. So last July around this time, there was considerably more dust across the tropics. And that's what I've noted this year, that the dust is a little bit less than what we've seen in recent years. So I don't think that's going to be an inhibiting factor through the rest of the season.
As far as sea surface temperatures, how does 2011 compare to, la to the last, the best analog year, 2008? Well, in 2008, these bluish temperatures are a little bit cooler water here in the Caribbean Sea in mid-July and even east of the Caribbean Sea. Well, in 2011, the water temperatures are warmer down here in the Caribbean Sea than they were in that best analog year. So the sea surface temperatures are actually a little warmer. Compared to last year, however, 2010, the water temperatures have cooled off a little bit. They're not quite as warm. So that might be another reason to expect a a little bit less activity than we saw in 2010 in terms of numbers. Remember, last year we had 19 named storms. We're not predicting that many this year. So for the rest of the season, what are we looking at? Well, our previous forecast back in May was looking at about 14 named storms and eight hurricanes. We've upped that number by one, and the primary reason for that is because we do not think there's going to be any threat of an El Nino developing. We think we're going to stay neutral in the Pacific, leaning toward La Nina next winter, and that means we're not going to have that inhibiting factor of the El Nino out there to perhaps knock that number down in the late season. So 15 named storms, nine of those hurricanes, and four of those intense category three, four, and five hurricanes for the rest of the year. I think that we're gonna see a significant ramp up in activity come the end of July and going through August, probably seeing four or five named storms in August and maybe five or six in September, and probably two or three into October, which is gonna total out somewhere around 15 named storms for this year. So even though it's been a fairly quiet start, it's gonna get very active quite soon toward the end of the month. Well, thanks for viewing. I'm Impact Weather Meteorologist Chris Hebert.